Tom Clancy. He's dead. Throughout his journeyed life and career, he'd write 20 books, but who cares? Who reads anymore, honestly? It's not movie! Most of you, if not all of you watching this, will know him from something like Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon. Nobody look! Nobody look! Nobody look! End War, Hawks, The Division, Rainbow Six. We're not here to talk about this Rainbow Six game. Or this Rainbow Six game. Or... This Rainbow Six game. The f what was I talking about? Rainbow Six Siege. A game which now, at the time of this video, is in its ninth year of development. But did you know that when the game came out, it very nearly followed closely in Clancy's footsteps and went straight into the bin? Or grave. Respectfully, I don't think Tom Clancy got put in a bin. So how can a game that was this dead on arrival still be somewhat thriving in its ninth year? Well... Welcome, welcome, come in. It's 2010. Pull up a pew and play on your... Blackberry. Life at Ubisoft is ridiculously busy at this time, with games releasing like Splinter Cell Conviction and Assassin's Creed 2. What else is happening Be behind the scenes? This is Ubisoft Montreal. I've tried getting inside and they said if I tried one more time, they would start shouting at me. Anyways, behind these walls, a team of... a team... Alright, hang on. I'm inside the building. I really, I'm really in the building now. In this building, right now, is a team working on the next Rainbow Six installment since Vegas 2. And it sounds like they're talking about it right now, so let's, let's listen in. You listen here, young de man developer. I'm not having any more leaks. I hit the microphone. I'm not having any more leaks. I thought, uh, I thought you wore those incontinence pants now. No, that, right, look, come on man, you can't talk to me about that at work. It's a very serious condition. I choose to leak myself. The game, I mean. So, the game is barely pre-alpha. Alpha, surely we should wait to show the audiences something more substantial, something to really get them excited about. Hmm, uh, yes, well, you might have a bit of a point there. What's that behind you though? I mean, I don't, I don't see anything behind you. Shazam! Your rule of Ubisoft, always carry a fucking rifle. Yeah! I'm a big boy businessman with big shoes. It's definitely not going to fail. Oh no! And after the reveal, the game went dark. <laughs> On that tight-knit group of devs that I mentioned before. Shazam! After its premature announcement, the game went into development hell. Everybody was lost on the team and nothing virtually came out in regards to news or new footage or gameplay about the game until 2013, where Ubisoft at E3 swore blind that the game was still in development, but GameStop took the game off its upcoming releases list and with the writing very much on the wall. There it is. <laughs> Rainbow Six Patriots was sunk. Worse still, it was the last game that Tom Clancy worked on properly before he, well, you know. So with Rainbow Six Patriots canceled, Ubisoft said, hey, 25 new people, Make us a new game, no pressure. It was a game they knew that they wanted to have longevity for the sake of the memory of Tom Clancy. Also because money. The team took the layer cake that is Rainbow Six and broke it down to its core ingredients. Counter terrorists, count, countering terrorists. But they knew that for longevity's sake, they were gonna to need to put some kind of big multiplayer element into the game. So, CTs. Countering T's sounds a little bit close to another game. They needed to give it something unique. Before much time had passed, Ubisoft now had 
a new idea, with emphasis placed on destructibility of all the maps. This would give players the complete freedom to operate every match how they would want to if they were a counter-terrorist team. All right, so they fully reinforced the upstairs. So I'm thinking if we just clear- the Leave it to me! Oh. And with the game starting to come together with teams from not just Montreal, but Barcelona, Kiev, Toronto, and I can't, I can't pronounce that. Cheng, Chengdu, Chengdu, and Shanghai, Rainbow Six had its new game. Rainbow Six Unbreakable. Aye? The game would get this title, not just because of the emphasis on the gameplay loop of, hey, break the shit out of this map. It was also because the Ubisoft dev team dedicated to working on Rainbow Six were the Unbreakable 25. I think that's kind of cute. One hundred and fifty FPS veterans and also long-term Rainbow Six players all got together to look at counter-terrorism in real life, including London's Iranian Embassy scene from the nineteen eighties, the Lufthansa Flight One Eighty One hijacking, and the Moscow Theatre Crisis from two thousand and two, to make sure that their portrayal of counter-terrorism was close to realism. That one, that might one not didn't age quite so, so well. <laughs> Bridging between Unbreakable and Rainbow Six Siege, however, lots of features were changed between two builds. For one, a respawn system was completely scrapped to stop. Uh, well, that. Also removed from the single player side of things were AI controlled squad mates. Instead, you were on your own. A rotational map editor was also completely scrapped from the game. It, it's kind of strange that they got rid of that, but they did end up later down the line doing map reworks to give maps new life. So I guess we didn't totally lose that one. Hit markers were in the game, and they quickly went because it was far too easy to just spray through a wall and find enemies that way. Injury status effects were also removed. And jumping. Because, quote, real life counter terrorist operators do not jump during their missions. The building's coming down. You're gonna have to jump. Ah, shit. Also, by the way, did you know that in the Iranian embassy siege, uh, whilst they were ferrying civilians down the stairs, as soon as they identified that a terrorist was hiding amongst the uh, civilians, they uh, Sparta kicked him down the stairs and then mag dumped him with an MP5. <laughs> that is so fucking operator. Intense battle music was also completely removed, putting more of an emphasis on in-game sound to create tension as opposed to cinematic music. Will you turn that fucking music down? E3 2014 arrived, and despite not long ago vowing that Patriots was still coming, Ubisoft now had this to show. All right, team, here we go. One, two, three. Good job, guys. Hey, shoot the ball! Come on! Oh, the fuck? Where are they? Kids, right there! I'm dead, I'm dead! I have to fight my enemy! I'm gonna shoot the girl! After a brief delay, for balancing checks, Rainbow Six Siege releases on December 1st. All of these obstacles, all of these problems, all of this adversity, and Rainbow Six Siege still came out. So it's only onwards and upwards from here, right? Hey, who put these really big stairs here? Seed received generally favorable reviews from critics according to aggregator side Metacritic. But beyond the praise, nobody was playing. Oh, but I can't see what this is about. Where the fuck is everyone? Because the problem was the cons far outweighed the pros upon launch. Hit detection was inconsistent. The progression was slow. The single player was pretty decent and showing you how to play the game was largely disappointing. There was barely anything to do on release. On the E3 trailer that came out, so, so that was a, a fun lot. lot. The eventual launch of Siege brought so many downgrades from 2014's E3 trailer to what we actually ended up getting the next year. In fills shown in the trailer, gone. Defenders rotating outside, gone. The hostage reacting realistically, gone. <laughs> Complete vertical play, gone. Nighttime maps, gone. 
Later, in May 2015, Ubisoft's CEO, whose name I'm not even going to attempt to butcher, said Rainbow Six Siege is going to outsell Far Cry 4's 7 million copies. Oh. <laughs> oh. And speaking of Far Cry's, uh, on launch, Rainbow Six Siege only sold 76,000 copies in the UK across all three platforms. Despite the game meaning to have a long life to preserve the memory of Clancy, <coughs> money, um, <laughs> the player base's average would only sit at 17,000 between December of 2015 and June of 2016. That doesn't sound too bad. I mean, fuck, 17,000 is a lot of people. I wish I had 17,000 people subscribed. <laughs> but for context, GTA 5 on launch had 360,000 peak players. Black Ops 3 had 65,000 on release. So this, for a game with this ambition, that's bad, that's real bad. That's not good, get, get better, scrub. So how would you yourself pull this back? Well, the reputation would precede them for being the unbreakable team because they did not give up on Siege and they clawed and fought to support the game post-launch, to get it over the mountain that was its first update. Operation Black Ice. Adding two new operators, Buck and Frost, and also the map Yacht. This would be the trend going forwards. New map, new operators, new meta, essentially. By Operation Skull Rain, which is when I started playing the game, the game's player base had already increased double itself and then 40% more. Holy! Fuck Batman, that's a lot of people. The player base would only grow strength to strength, operation to operation. We can't lose. Look at all this money. We are so back. My neighbor's in the garden. Rainbow Six Siege was supposed to be counter terrorists, countering terrorists with realistic means. Or at least that's what it was. Siege today is more of a sci-fi game than anything right now. <laughs> There's even a bit on the loading screen that says, this is not officially endorsed by Count Terrorism teams. It's like, yeah, no fucking shit. Does this look like something you would see in a counter-terrorist operation? <laughs> It'd be really cool, but that's definitely not anywhere close to reality. Prisma projectors. Running drone people. Grenade sucking frisbees. <laughs> and the dance, everyone. Do the, do the dance. But does it matter? Could a game survive nine years if it was solely grounded in realistic counter-terrorism means? Did it need to change to survive? I don't know. It's a question for another video, maybe. Or even for the comments. Write a comment, please. It's good for the algorithm. Developers wanted Rainbow Six Siege to have a lifespan of 10 years. And whilst year nine has already garnered a lot of criticisms and the fact that the law is a complete fucking mess, like, holy shit, white mask, they just disappear. I could make an entire, <laughs> the, the law is a train wreck and maybe I'll make a completely separate video on that if people want to see it. But 10 years for any game is incredibly impressive. The only game that comes to mind that's still active like that is Team Fortress 2. There's probably more that you can yell at me about in the comments. I like a comment, please. It's, it's good, good for the algorithm. But for a game to have lasted this long with 10 years on its doorstep, that's really impressive. And for everything that it's gone through, all we can really say is Rainbow Six Siege, you've done good, fella. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to patrons Owen Rico, Barry the Awesome 23, and Casey Young. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. If you would like to support the channel too, you can like this video, leave a comment about lemons, and subscribe also, please. If you would like to support the channel further too, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, the details are in the description for as little as a single pound or dollar. Till next time though, friends, I've been Stag. You as always have been wonderful. Look after yourself, be kind. I'll see you in the next one.